Hi everyone, today's video is going to be a bit different and it's going to be about home maintenance. Specifically, if you have a forced air furnace or air conditioning like I do, you have blower fan in there. And few people know that the blower fan itself needs to be lubricated. So the topic of today's video is to show you how to do it so that you can get the best lifetime out of your blower motor. Safety is of course the biggest thing. So when you work on appliances like that, you need to wear some gloves because you can have sharp edges on the sheet metal, which is used for the construction of the furnace. You also need to make sure that you turn the power off to the furnace. And also for safety, you can also turn the gas supply off. So once you have cut the power to your furnace, you can open the blower motor panel, which is this one. Typically it's the lower one. And behind it, you will see the main control board of the furnace, the wiring that goes to the thermostat, and behind it, you have the blower fan, this large fan here. So we will have to remove it. It basically slides out like this. Um, so the first thing we have to do is to disconnect all the wires on the control board and to remove it. It might be possible to slide the blower fan without disconnecting everything. I might try that and uh, yeah, let's see if we can do it the simple way. So the only thing I had to do is to remove the screws which were here and there. And now the blower motor assembly is going to slide right out. It seems to me that there is ample cable length to be able to remove it. Unfortunately, my thermostat wire is in the way. So I'm going to remove it. One helpful tip here is when you do it, take note of the colors of the wires that go to each terminal so that you, you're not mixed up. Uh, so now that the wire is out of the way, I'm simply going to slide the assembly right out. Again, it's very important when you do that, that the power is shut down because not only you have electricity there if, if the power is not shut down so you can get electrocuted, but in addition, if for any reason the blower motor starts, you can get a finger cut or something. Normally there's a safety switch, uh, but don't assume that it will work. Uh, so let's see if it's fine right out. And here we have the blower motor assembly. Let me show you what it looks like. So you have this part that spins and the motor is actually on the other side. Right there. That's our motor. So there's a bearing here and there's a bearing on the other side. So, so unfortunately the motor my furnace is using does not have any port to put the oil in. But here, inside here, there is a bearing with a sponge that holds the oil, the oil. And the problem is that with time, over the years, the oil gets used up and then the shaft starts to eat up the bearing. So I'm going to disassemble the, the entire assembly to remove the motor, uh, disassemble the motor, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, the first step in disassembling this is to remove the screw which is right there. And that's going to free the blower itself. And then I can remove the motor. When you do that, you need to be careful. It needs to be in the right place when you put it back in. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is that the motor, the blower will no longer be centered in the assembly and it will touch on either this side or the other side. Also, when you disassemble this, it's a good opportunity to clean the blades of the blower motor uh, assembly if they are dirty. It might okay, I got it finally. <sighs> nice. So on this assembly, It doesn't slide out, it, it, it is stuck in between. So basically the plan is to remove these bolts here, here, and here, then slide the motor out and leave the, 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 the blower fan inside the assembly. There is a capacitor here for the motor and you need to discharge it. So to do that, you just take a screwdriver, make sure the power is off again, and uh, simply short the pins like that. Okay. I've removed all the screws that hold the motor in place and now I'm going to simply slide it out.
Okay. I'm simply going to remove all the wires. I should probably have done that earlier. Remove all the wires to uh, disassemble the motor from the rest of the furnace. Disassembling the motor is relatively easy. On each end, you have uh, basically uh, nuts and bolts. So you simply remove the four of them and then you can slide the different parts out. Just like that. So once that you have done the disassembly of the, the screws, normally you should be able to remove the different parts. Before you go further in the disassembly, just to make sure that everything is aligned, uh, you take a paint pen like that and you just put a mark on each side. This will allow you to make sure that you reassemble it in the right direction. And yeah, it opens just like that. And here is our motor. It's now disassembled. So, what I want to show you is this in here. So if you look closely, there is a sponge inside. We can, I'm, I don't think you can see it on video, but we can see it here. And this sponge holds some oil. So what you want to do is to replenish the oil inside that sponge so that the bearing here stays lubricated. And there is another bearing on the other side also, so you have to do it on the back of the motor also. Yeah, I can simply push it from the inside and here it's the same. So the oil I'm going to use is this one. Uh, it's very cheap and uh, you have a nice applicator here, a nice dispenser. So what you want to do is simply put some oil in the sponge and do not overfill it because if the oil gets into contact with the, the windings of the motor, it can reduce their life. So be careful with that. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but the sponge definitely absorbs the oil. Okay, so the sponge is pretty much saturated with oil now. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to do the other side now. Now it's lubricated, so it's back to reassemble the motor like it was before. Uh, before doing so, I just want to show you the internal in, because it's, it's pretty, pretty nice and we, we don't get to see it often. So these are the windings, that's the stator, all the wiring here. Uh, you don't use all the wires at the same time, it's used to select the speed of the motor. Maybe I can make another video on that. Um, and interestingly, this piece here is a thermal fuse. So if the windings for any reason start overheating, um, this fuse here is going to open and it's going to stop the motor. So yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. So once you're done reassembling, the motor is pretty straightforward. Uh, just like that. Now I can put it like this and make sure this is okay, fine. Nice. Okay, now this part like this. And here we are. And I can simply put the bolts back in. So now is the moment of truth. If you work properly and hopefully didn't break anything, uh, you should be able to spin the motor freely. And that's clearly the case. There's very limited friction. Uh, it keeps turning by itself. So that's pretty good. So it's done. Uh, it's oiled. I put quite a bit of oil in there. So um, it was definitely helpful to, to do that. I'm going to go back to the furnace and mount the motor back in place. So I've been trying a few different ways to reassemble it uh, with one person and uh, still having this connected to the furnace definitely doesn't make it easy. Uh, the solution I found is to put it in that orientation. It gives you the capability to align everything. You just drop the motor in place. You can rotate it to align uh, the holes with the screw hole and, and then you can simply 
uh, screw everything in place. So that should be uh, definitely doable, even if you do it by yourself, I, I can do it. Okay, looks good. So what we are going to do now is basically reassemble the blower fan itself on the motor. So you need to make sure that uh, everything is aligned properly. You need to make sure that everything spins freely, there's no binding or anything, and the margin on each side is approximately the same. Looks good. And once it looks good, you can simply tighten the screw right there. It was pretty tight and there, there must be a reason for that. So I'm also going to make it relatively tight. Not too much, I don't want to strip it, but definitely tight enough so that it won't move. So once you're done, you need to reconnect the starting capacitor so we discharge it a bit earlier. So you should be fine to touch it. Just like that. Then we can reconnect all the wires to the control panel. So this is when it's helpful to have taken some notes about which wire goes where. So I'm going to do that now. So it seems like we are all set uh, and I'm going to try to put it back in. Slowly because I don't want to damage any wire which could result in a short circuit or something like that. I don't know if you've seen much, but basically it's back in place. And now I'm simply going to put the two screws here and here back on, and then I should be all set. So everything is complete now. Uh, everything is back in place. Uh, so I'm going to inspect all the wires, make sure I didn't forget to connect anything, such as for instance, the thermostat wire, which I did forget. Uh, make sure that when we assembling the unit, I didn't damage any of the wires anywhere and then we should be good to go for our test. So now it's the moment of truth. I'm going to turn on the power back on. I do have the status LED of the furnace here, which is yellow, which means that it's turned on and everything's working fine. So I'm about to turn on the fan in three, two, one, zero. And it's working great. I don't know if you can hear me, but it doesn't make any noise. That's great. Let's turn it off. So what's very interesting, frankly, is that I believed I didn't need to do it. But now that I've done it, what I notice is that I had a noise which um, I could hear at the beginning of the cycle. So when the fan was starting and I don't hear that noise anymore. I'm going to put the cover back on, we're going to retest it, and it looks like we are done, so that was not too bad. Uh, it took a bit longer than expected, but it's not too bad. Great. It's working great, no problem, everything is good. So that's a job well done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was definitely an interesting experience, something that I've never done before. So uh, I hope that by watching this video, you were able to learn from my experience, uh, from my small mistakes also. Uh, for instance, don't forget the gloves. Also, if I had to do it again, I think I would remove the entire assembly from the furnace because having to deal with the blower assembly here on the door, uh, I, I think it's calling for issues, but I was able to do it. Uh, as I said, I believe that the fan is now working a bit better. Um, I don't know if it was due to a lack of lubrication or if the way I assembled it back, it's better than what it was before but definitely something I would recommend doing, especially if your furnace is approaching 10 years 
old or something like that. Or if you use a lot, if you use it a lot, for instance, if you keep the blower running all the time for ventilation purposes. So I hope you found this video helpful and uh, see you next time. Bye.